Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that I have another day to come back on and, and speak with you guys about how awesome uh, our Lord Jesus is. Let me pull this table up to me. So I just want to share a few things with you guys. Um, man, I'm telling you, it's, we are in a time frame of um, dividing. Like, I really do believe that for a while now, um, in the spiritual realm, the Lord has been uh, choosing, you know, as people on an individual basis and also in the political scene, um, who will be left and who will be taken. And, um, you know, some people, and I've been shown this in dreams that, you know, there's people that they are striving and striving and striving and striving within themselves and they never come to the, the truth of the gospel about faith in Christ alone, that he finished it on the cross, that he paid all your debts, that, you know, that we're sinners saved by grace. And, and there are people striving and striving and striving in the school building because this is the, the analogy or parable that the Lord uses to me um, in this day and age about a school building. Uh, many people are at school, but they're not, they're not learning. They're not um, acing their papers, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. But um, the zombies in the school... You know, I've had tons of dreams about the zombies in the school and they're, they are the walking dead. They are the, they're, the Lord's trying to say they're walking dead. They're spiritually dead. There is no life in them. And Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Jesus, he's trying to say there are people that are attending school and I am not abiding in them. And they are not abiding in me. They are not believing that I paid it all on the cross. Okay. They are not believing that the law of this land is not my law. You know, the law of liberty, of faith, belief, grace. And I've had many dreams where the walking dead are trying to attack me. And, and others, there's like a small group of us and we're running through the school and these spiritually dead people are trying to attack us guys. And, and we just have to dig our heels in and just, just stay in Jesus. Just, you know, fight the good fight of faith that, that, that he is our, our lawyer, our doctor, you know, he's our healer. He's our redeemer. He is our savior. And, um, because no flesh, uh, can earn their way to heaven. Um, if you're depending on your own works to get to heaven, you'll see. You'll see when Jesus comes and he takes his people. You'll see how that works out. Because it's not going to work at all. And uh, you now I flash back on dreams and visions um, from over, you know, this past year or so. And and the Lord brings understanding to me of the things I didn't understand at that time. And I've been shown dreams um, about many people that do YouTube channels. And the Lord has shown me which ones are, are alive and which ones are dead in Christ. You know, I don't, I don't call people out unless the Lord tells me to. There's been two people I've been told to call out by him. Not by my flesh, because I have, you know, I think they're not this or that, but because he told me. They're making my kid, children sick. They're not saving, they're not leading anybody to me, but to their own righteousness, then their own works and their own salvation. And so that's why I called, I've called two people out. But um, the zombies in the school, you guys, you know, we're all in the school. It's called Jesus University. And, um, 
I had this dream. Um, now, like I said in my previous videos, I've had the dreams have shifted for me. Um, the Lord is teaching me in a different way. I know it sounds might sound silly to people, but to me, it's very precious. Um, he would he's been using farm animals or different animals animals in my dreams to liken things to through scripture and, um, you know, the behaviors of animals and things like that, like cows and, uh, chickens and, you know, snakes and horses and goats and sheep and dogs and birds and all those types of things. Well, now it's taken a turn to, um, uh, fruits and vegetables. <laughs> so, here in the past week, it's been uh, morel mushrooms, seaweed, carrots, potatoes, okay? So I'm going to tell you, um, the dream that I had uh, the night before last was I was standing in a garden area and these... Um, rooted vegetables began to be plucked up. They were harvest being harvested. And um, as I seen them come up out of the dirt, they were laid down before me. And I could see that like a carrot, like this picture, you think you go to the supermarket and these carrots are beautiful. They're all nice and straight and there's not one blemish on them. And you know, they're the, they're just something, they look really yummy and you want to eat them. But in this scene, the Lord was showing me what these carrots and they were potatoes too. They had grown rooted into the ground. Well, of course they're root vegetables, right? These, um, carrots were not completely straight, nor were the potatoes. Um, these carrots, they had to grow. You could tell. I mean, they were even worse than this. They were mangled, but they looked really good, you guys. The, I mean, they were super edible. They were fat. They were nourished. But these carrots, when they grew, they had to grow around obstacles. You know, they kind of went out a certain way, and then and then they grew down a little bit, and then they kind of bubble out this way. And, and they were they were actually just really beautiful and very unique. And the potatoes were the same way too. And I asked myself in the dream, I said, they didn't grow straight. Why is that? But they were being harvested. It was a harvest. And, and, and I knew, I still knew in my spirit as I was looking at them that, that they were full of nutrients, full of minerals and vitamins, and they were super nourishing and that they were being harvested and um, they had been grown, they had been cared for and watered and taken care of. And even though they were imperfect and they weren't beautiful, uh, they were prized. They were prized uh, roots. And <clears throat> so when I woke up, I was thinking about it. And um, there is a scripture in Daniel 1, and it talks about how the kings meet. Uh, let's see, Daniel talks about, then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Now pulse is vegetables. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So um, he was saying, well, don't eat the king's meat because you might not, you know, might look like everybody else. So, you know, <laughs> just eat the, the pulse. So he consented to them in this manner and proved them 10 days. And at the end of the 10 days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children, which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melsar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. That's amazing. 
He didn't eat the king's meat. He was just, you know, and it talks about how there was melons and, and, um, uh, let's see, roots and, you know, just, they just ate pulse and vegetables. And so Sherry gave that to me. I was like, well, what does it talk about vegetables, you know, in the, in the scripture, but, but yeah. And then too, so all these things are happening, uh, you guys and the Lord is coming back so soon, so soon. And he's trying to tell us that, you know, we're all unperfect. We all fall short. Um, the laws of this, uh, of man's flesh of this earthly world is not the laws of God. Um, uh, God's people are, are cultivated and grown wild. We're not cultivated by, um, something that earthly man, man, man's hands did. We're cultivated by the hand of God. He waters us and he makes us grow and, and he teaches us. The Holy Spirit teaches us all things and leads us into all understanding. And when you're earnestly trying to seek his face, he is faithful and true. When you're not trying to seek man's approval, um, or what man thinks of you, then you stand in truth in Jesus Christ because he leads you into all truth. So, that's why people say, be careful who you're listening to. If they're bringing you guilt, fear, shame, condemnation, you know, throw it in the trash. Um, and another thing I wanted to um, share with you guys is I was sitting out on the front porch and I was just playing some praise and worship and I forget what song it was, but the, the song ended on my phone, but I could still hear it playing. You guys, it was so weird. It was like up in the sky. <laughs> I was like, is someone else around here playing the same song as me? Is one of my neighbors playing the same song? That's impossible because I'm not even on a radio. I just chose random. And so I kind of leaned my ear around and I could hear it in the distance up in the sky. It was like, it was like, uh, all I can say was it was heavenly angels continuing on with the song. It was just amazing. You guys, <laughs> it's just like blown away. And the Lord is just so awesome. I just love him so much. And, um, so, oh, my daughter just brought me a Pepsi. Love you. I love you too. Same great, yeah. And um, so I wanted to share that with you guys. And oh my goodness, the Lord is coming so soon. He is coming so soon. And, you know, I'm not here to bring you guys condemnation or fear or guilt. All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You just believe it in your heart that he died for your sins. 2,000 years ago, he knew you. He knew what you would do. He knew how you would feel, how you would think, how you would react. He knew your whole life from the beginning to the end. It's just that you don't. But he does. You see what I mean? We're all imperfect. And we walk through this imperfect world in this imperfect flesh. And the only way we're going to be perfect is when the Lord gives us our incorruptible bodies because we live in a sinful flesh and the Lord loves you and he forgives you. He died on a cross for you and he shed his perfect blood. And if you believe in that, if you believe in Jesus and you believe what he did for you, then you're saved. Okay. Whether you're living with someone and you're not married, uh, in God's eyes, you're married. Okay. It's called, a, it's called a marriage bed. All right. It's not an earthly contract. We have a heavenly contract with God. Okay. Um, there's a lot of things that just people just don't realize and they, they just trash and they, they bash each other and that's not God's will. That's not God's will. God's will is love. And uh, forgiveness, because we're all, we just, we all fall short, you know. All right, I love you guys. I'm going to go drink my, my Pepsi. My daughter brought me a Pepsi, and, <laughs> and uh, my family's home now, but praise Jesus, and I love you guys.